Good, you have guts, the divine wrath warlord uttered as a cold light flashed across his eyes. Given Maximus's straightforward answer, perhaps his combat strength really was exceptional, the warlord thought to himself. He went on, Kid, I will only send out one punch, but this punch will be my strongest. As long as you can defend against it, I will acknowledge you as a full-fledged member of the team. After saying this, the Divine Wrath Supreme Heavenly Emperor's expression quickly turned serious. Surging battle intent soared into the sky from his body. With that, he released the Heavenly Rage Divine Body, a powerful special physique that was unleashed by accumulating battle intent and anger. The stronger the battle intent and anger, the greater the power of the special physique. Of course, there was a limit to this kind of explosive force. Otherwise, the Heavenly Rage Divine Body would be dangerous. Heavenly Rage Million Fists! Divine Wrath screamed. The soaring fury and battle intent gathered together. In Maximus's perception, it was as if only he and the Divine Wrath Supreme Heavenly Emperor were left in this world. The rest of the Heavenly Emperors had disappeared. The punch produced an effect that was akin to a sky full of stars. Maximus squinted. The combat strength of this Divine Wrath Warlord was definitely the strongest among the medium-grade Heavenly Emperors. It could be said that he was invincible to anyone below the upper-grade Supreme Heavenly Emperor realm. No wonder this man attacked first. However, the stronger this man is, the easier it will be for me to gain his recognition after I defeat him. Maximus mused to himself. He contracted his body. At the same time, the extreme violet sky fire surged out and filled the sky with a sea of fire. He didn't even need to use his divine skill to deal with the divine wrath supreme heavenly emperor. He could only rely on this divine flame. The overwhelming purple flames swallowed the fist shadows of the Divine Wrath Supreme Heavenly Emperor. Then, the flames slashed toward the opponent like a sharp sword. The blade-like licks of fire stopped right in front of the Divine Wrath Warlord. Even so, the opponent's face turned deathly pale. The purple flames seemed to possess a strong desire to devour him completely. He rarely felt such acute danger before. Within the extreme violet skyfire, a destructive aura made the Divine Wrath Warlord suffocate. So, so strong, he muttered after letting out a gulp. With merely a thought from Maximus, the extreme violet skyfire immediately rolled back and re-established itself as a halo of flame around him. I lost the Divine Wrath Warlord declared. He then looked at Maximus with a complicated expression. Finally, his expression became respectful. He pronounced, Thank you, Brother Alexei, for showing mercy. With the help of an expert like you, I believe that we will be able to gain something from the profound Phoenix miniature world. Divine Wrath wasn't an idiot. How could he not know that Maximus had shown mercy? At this point, the mood in the room changed. The other heavenly emperors looked at Maximus differently, now acknowledging him as a true peer. However, the expression of upper-grade supreme heavenly emperors was different. What kind of flame was that just now? It felt like it was even stronger than a top divine flame. It was powerful enough to threaten us upper grade heavenly emperors, one of them said to the others via voice transmission. Another commented, It seems that the transcendent prince has found a truly extraordinary warrior. He can fight at the level of an upper grade supreme heavenly emperor for sure. On the other hand, the divine mirror empress's expression did not change much. Her main technique involved the soul and illusions. So what if this guy's combat strength was exceptional? He would still not be able to escape her illusion technique. As for the Cyan Demon Emperor, 
He had always been proud and narcissistic. He didn't even pay attention to Maximus's actions. I will fight you, sir. A hoarse voice broke the tense silence. Maximus's eyes focused. Immediately, he looked over and saw a purple-haired, young, upper-grade, heavenly sovereign walk out. He looked like a young man, but his voice was extremely old-sounding, as if he had experienced many vicissitudes of life. Pyramid Warlord? Maximus uttered as he recalled the background information the Transcendent Prince had given him. The Pyramid Supreme Heavenly Emperor was a demon beast. His bloodline wasn't outstanding. Although it had also reached the top divine grade, it was the lowest of those at that rank. But he had lived for a long time, millions of years in fact. And because his combat strength had really not improved much over all that time, he was seen as a thorn in the side of other heavenly emperors. His process of improvement had not been one filled with triumph or good luck, but rather slow, arduous work. In the process, he had accumulated a decent top-level divine skill, and his internal strength base was now incomparably sturdy. With a tone of respect for his opponent's experience, Maximus uttered, Yes, please proceed. The Pyramid Supreme Heavenly Emperor chuckled. He said via divine sense, I have already seen through the Transcendent Prince's intention. He wants to use you to intimidate others. But although your recent performance was impressive, you should know you haven't done enough to get the Cyan Demon Emperor's attention. Maximus sighed to himself, as expected of someone who had lived for so many years. This person grasped the complexities of the situation perfectly. Maximus took a deep breath and decided to use a few tricks. Senior, aren't you going to transform into your true form? He queried. The Pyramid Supreme Heavenly Emperor shook his head. No, at my age, it doesn't matter, he mused. Pure darkness, the Pyramid Warlord shouted. Terrifying dark energy surged out of his body. The dark energy seemed to have a life of its own as it split into countless tentacles. These tentacles became a sort of amorphous creature that bared its fangs and brandished its claws. The heavenly emperors who were looking on felt a jolt of fear. Since Maximus had decided to use this bout to attract the Cyan Demon Emperor's attention, he naturally would bring out all his tricks. Divine Flame Battle Body, condense! Divine Flame Battle Fist, he screamed. The Divine Flame Battle Body and Divine Flame Battle Fist both erupted with their utmost power. They were at the limit of a transcendent grade divine skill. With Maximus's current internal strength base, which was at the peak of the medium grade Supreme Heavenly Emperor realm, this was enough for him to reach the upper grade of the Supreme Heavenly Emperor realm. However, he still did not have full control over his own strength. Maximus took a deep breath. The extreme violet sky fire immediately merged with the Divine Flame Battle Fist, and he punched out a purple flame that blotted out the sun and turned the sky violet. The dark tentacles were turned into ashes by the power of the flame before they could even react. Break! Maximus shouted angrily. In the end, the Pyramid Supreme Heavenly Emperor was forced to retreat in a sorry state, surrounded by a sea of purple fire. Maximus withdrew the extreme violet skyfire in time to spare his opponent, then nodded solemnly. The Pyramid Supreme Heavenly Emperor shook his head and walked back with a sigh, then commented, Young people nowadays are truly amazing. I, an old man, can't afford to mess with them. Of course, since he was millions of years old, by young people, he essentially meant all the other martial artists gathered in the hall. At this point, 
the Cyan Demon Emperor had turned his attention to Maximus with a fixed gaze. Maximus's strike had reached the preliminary peak in terms of combat strength. He had immediately become interested in Maximus. Given his powers of perception, he could tell that the Transcendent Prince was using Maximus as a pawn, hoping to intimidate him and eventually suppress him. He sneered in his heart. Trying to suppress me? Do you think that anyone can accomplish such a thing? I would like to see you try. Strands of green light surged out. The Cyan Demon Emperor turned into a huge green creature with six wings. This was an insect-type divine beast, and it looked extremely ferocious. The six green wings flapped, and six beams of green light shot toward Maximus, like sharp swords. Each beam of green light could easily kill an upper-grade Supreme Heavenly Emperor. Divine Flame Battle Fist! Maximus countered. The monstrous purple flame turned into a fiery fist and shot out toward the opponent. Green light and purple flames instantly filled the entire hall. The Cyan Demon Emperor's ferocious insect mouth revealed a hint of ridicule. In the next moment, he disappeared from where he had been standing in a flash. This was the Demon Shadow Flash. It was an innate ability of the Green Demon Beast. When he used it, he could teleport within a certain range. Before Maximus could even register what had happened, the Cyan Demon Emperor had reappeared behind him. He opened his huge mouth and was about to swallow Maximus whole. Yet, just then, Maximus circulated the Golden Immortal Step and dodged over a hundred yards away in a flash. Maximus knew he had been too careless. He hadn't expected the Cyan Demon Emperor to have the ability to teleport. Fortunately, Lord Flame had reminded him just in time. Otherwise, he would have suffered an embarrassment, and this no doubt would have been noticed by all the martial artists watching the bout so closely. The Transcendent Prince's facial expression changed slightly. In his investigations, he had not uncovered this special ability of the Cyan Demon Emperor. He thought to himself, Damn it! The Cyan Demon Emperor hit himself too well. With such an ability, he will be able to escape from me in the future. What a jerk, hiding something like that from me. He never intended to be loyal to me. He paused to collect himself, then went on. Huh. Fortunately, I found an even more terrifying expert. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been able to force the Cyan Demon Emperor to reveal such a trump card. Maximus really is extraordinary. Meanwhile, the Cyan Demon Emperor was astonished that the Demon Shadow Flash had somehow been discovered in advance by his opponent. Still, he cast the move once again. This time, other than the Divine Mirror Empress, who saw some signs, all the Heavenly Sovereigns, including the Transcendent Prince, still didn't detect the nature of the move. Their Divine Souls weren't strong enough. Up! Lord Flame reminded Maximus in time. Maximus had used the Divine Step technique to its maximum, and his speed was also astonishing. However, his opponent was slightly quicker, and he had almost been punctured by one of the sharp green wings. Without any hesitation, Maximus unleashed the Sun Flame body and Golden Immortal physique. His body was now surrounded by raging flames. When his opponent activated the Demon Shadow Flash for the third time, Maximus unleashed all of his flames, wrapping himself up like a flaming ball. Ah! The Cyan Demon Emperor let out a miserable cry. His figure appeared on Maximus's left side. Divine Flame Battle Fist! Maximus shouted. His opponent was sent flying backward while spinning. He hit a wall at full speed, causing it to crumble. Only then did Maximus let out a breath of air and return to his normal state. After that, 
including the Divine Wrath Warlord. All of the heavenly emperors looked at Maximus with respect, as if they were beholding an emperor. Even if this young man's internal strength base was unstable, his combat strength was clearly peerless. Among the seven princes, only the exterminating prince could compare. Just then, the transcendent prince stepped forward, hoping to lighten the tension in the room. He commented, Come on, you two. This was just meant to be a spar. You guys don't need to fight to the death. He then let out an awkward laugh. Maximus couldn't help but roll his eyes at the transcendent prince's behavior. Meanwhile, the Cyan Demon Emperor walked away with a gloomy expression and didn't say anything else. Despite the fact that he was irked and angry, he restrained himself in the face of Maximus's unfathomable strength. Most of the other heavenly emperors were happy to see the Cyan Demon Emperor humbled by Maximus. After all, the Cyan Demon was simply too arrogant to be a good peer to any of them. And even if they weren't technically a match for him in terms of raw strength, they were all top experts from their respective powers. Their status was high enough that they did not need to kowtow to him out of fear. Over the next few days, Maximus became familiar with many heavenly emperors in the Transcendent Prince's group. To his surprise, over this time, the Cyan Demon Emperor directly engaged him, and Maximus learned that this great warrior had an agenda of his own. Clearly, Maximus's performance had convinced the Cyan Demon Emperor that they were truly peers, and now that the other man knew he could not handily defeat Maximus, he was in fact quite friendly toward him. Clearly, he was trying to form an alliance. Though this surprised Maximus, he ultimately welcomed the friendship. After all, the only reason he had challenged the Cyan Demon Emperor in the first place was to please the Transcendent Prince. And Maximus didn't want to start a feud for no reason. Indeed, it was best to eliminate grudges whenever possible, he had found. At the same time, the Transcendent Prince was chatting with a middle-aged man. The man had a similar appearance to the prince, but the aura on his body was unfathomable, like a vast ocean. Father, this is the situation. The Transcendent Prince began, then went on to discourse on Maximus, the Cyan Demon Emperor, and the others. When the eight-legged Lightning Emperor heard this, his eyes suddenly flashed with a bright light. A peak, medium-grade, supreme heavenly emperor internal strength base. But he has the combat strength of a peak, supreme heavenly emperor. This kid is truly extraordinary. Strange. I have never heard of him before, he mused. And of course... The Cyan Demon Emperor will have a combat strength equal to or greater than mine once he masters his innate ultimate technique. My son, you have to win over these two people. Once they join our sect, it won't be long before our overall strength will be greatly enhanced. Of course, if they object... The eight-legged Lightning Emperor's expression darkened, but he didn't finish the thought. The Transcendent Prince quickly chimed in. I understand. Maximus seems to be quite tactful. He doesn't seem like a person who would fight a great power head-on. Furthermore, he is smart. I didn't even give him much guidance, but he was able to glean what I wanted him to do. He immediately took on the Cyan Demon Emperor. And look, now Cyan Demon is much more humble and respectful. It worked. He paused and thought, then went on. That said, given his character, I don't know that the Cyan Demon will ultimately agree to join our sect. The eight-legged Lightning Emperor harumphed, 
then advised. Fine, fine. As long as one of them agrees, it will be beneficial to the growth of our sect. You don't have to force both of them. We're leaving for the wild forest tomorrow. Go and tell the others to prepare. The next day, powerful auras gathered in the central square of the Pinnacle Sect. As one of the seven five-star forces in the inner region, the Pinnacle Sect naturally had a large number of people who could travel to the profound Phoenix miniature world. Maximus couldn't help but let out a sigh at the strength of a five-star power when he saw the foundation of the Pinnacle Sect on full display. A few moments later, a majestic pressure, along with a vast and boundless power, descended with a loud bang, as if the heavens were pressing down on the plaza. Then, a magnificent thundercloud formed above. A tall, middle-aged man stood on the thundercloud. His eyes were filled with bright light as a vast and mighty aura swept out. His arrival was accompanied by a symphony of thunder and lightning. Greetings, sect master! All the disciples present declared in unison. Simultaneously, they got down on their knees, touching their foreheads to the ground. Since they were visitors unaccustomed to these rituals, Maximus and the Cyan Demon Emperor only took a knee, but the eight-legged Lightning Emperor didn't mind. With a wave of his hand, the disciples felt an invisible force lifting them up. The Lightning Emperor did not waste any time. He waved his sleeve, and large amounts of lightning surged out wildly. The bolts formed a huge flying ship in the void, vivid and lifelike. Maximus sensed a trace of danger from this flying ship. Clearly, it was made entirely of lightning. Not only could it be used to fly, it could also be used to kill enemies. Let's go! the Lightning Emperor declared as he took the lead and stepped into the ship. His disciples flew over without hesitation. Maximus and the other emissaries hesitated for a moment. In the end, though, they could not help but agree. Once everyone was on board, the ship jolted forward like a lightning bolt, heading toward the wild forest that separated the middle region and the inner region. Sitting on the ship, Maximus saw the scenery below quickly fading away. Even with his divine soul, he could only decipher blurry scenes. The speed of this lightning flying ship has already surpassed the limit of the Supreme Heavenly Emperor realm. At this speed, it will only take three to four days to reach the forest, he mused. Then, Maximus's gaze landed on a figure sitting cross-legged in front of him. That figure was the Lightning Emperor. Just by looking at him, Maximus could feel waves of danger surging in his heart. The combat strength was beyond his imagination. At the same time, Maximus being Maximus, he could not help but wonder whether he could catch up to this warlord in overall strength after his time in the profound Phoenix miniature world. Maximus retracted his gaze and closed his eyes to cultivate as well, familiarizing himself with his newly increased strength. Though it seemed that the Lightning Emperor was deep in meditation, he in fact had one eye open and directed at Maximus. He mused to himself, This Maximus is indeed not inferior to the others. I can only hope that my son's evaluation is accurate. We need Maximus in our pinnacle sect. Otherwise... A trace of ruthlessness flashed across the Emperor's eyes. A few days later, a rumbling sound came from the void. Everyone was startled awake. They raised their heads in shock and looked over. Within a thick layer of clouds, a nine-headed, Jet Black Serpent was pulling a huge wooden boat, which seemed to sail through the sky. Although it was a wooden boat, it was forged from the heavenly origin divine wood. Its powerful defensive ability was enough to withstand a strike from a true peak supreme heavenly emperor. 
The Heaven Marshal sect is still as flamboyant as ever, the Lightning Emperor muttered. The Heaven Marshal sect was another of the great five-star powers in the inner region. Ha ha ha! Eight-legged Lightning Emperor! Long time no see! An old man in a green robe announced. As the old man greeted him, the nine-headed inky serpent followed suit. Then it howled, and its voice shook the heavens. Waves of terrifying energy caused the clouds to churn unceasingly. The Lightning Emperor's eyes focused, and they seemed to contain a boundless storm as they swept past the nine-headed inky serpent. The serpent retracted its fiery breath and retreated in fear. Beside Maximus, the Cyan Demon Emperor had a look of disdain as he commented, A dignified inky serpent actually willingly fell into the hands of the Heaven Marshal sect to pull a stupid carriage. This is really a disgrace. A nine-headed inky serpent was considered to have one of the top bloodlines in the forbidden ancient world. Members of this species had successfully established factions of their own in the inner region. However, this inky serpent had joined the Heavenly Martial Sect, and it had become a sort of workhorse. This was shocking to behold. The Divine Wrath Warlord likewise sighed at the provocative behavior of the Heaven Martial Sect. The old man in the green robe, who was known as the Iron-Willed Supreme Heavenly Emperor, was at the top of the Heavenly Emperor ranking. His expression darkened when he saw that his nine-headed inky serpent had been pressured to retreat. He spat out, Lightning Emperor, you still like to bully those weaker than you, I see. If that's what you think, spar with me. We are of the same generation, so surely we must be considered equals. The Lightning Emperor shot back in a tone of disdain. The Iron-Willed Emperor choked on his own saliva. The Lightning Emperor was ranked fourth, but he was only ranked eighth. Still, he could not refuse such a challenge. While this exchange was going on, the Transcendent Prince pointed at one of the young men on the other side and explained to Maximus, That's one of the Seven Princes. He is known as the Iron-Willed Prince. He possesses the Divine Martial Physique, and he's especially good at protracted battles. The longer he fights, the more powerful his special physique becomes. If one has any hope against him, they must defeat him quickly. Besides the exterminating prince, he is the most difficult of the princes to deal with. The transcendent prince could not hide his disdain. For to him, the iron-willed prince was like a cockroach that simply couldn't be killed, no matter how one tried. Maximus nodded his head, indicating that he already knew about the Iron-Willed Prince. Then, he looked at the older man who was currently battling the Lightning Emperor. At this moment, the Transcendent Prince laughed out loud before explaining, Look at the forces the Iron-Willed Emperor has brought. They were not wisely chosen. He only cares about battle, but is not a natural leader in peaceful times. In the Iron-Willed Emperor's cohort, there were only two upper-grade Supreme Heavenly Emperors, and all the rest seemed rather unremarkable. Naturally, the two sides were sizing each other up. It was clear that the Pinnacle Sex cohort was superior, as it included the Cyan Demon Emperor, the Divine Mirror Empress, and the Pyramid Emperor. Still, the competition between the Transcendent Prince and the Iron-Willed Prince was clear and intense. Maximus predicted that a clash would commence as soon as they entered the miniature world. Although the Lightning Emperor and the Iron-Willed Emperor were constantly quarreling with each other, the chariot and the lightning flying ship pulled by the nine-headed inky serpent were still flying toward the wild forest. After another half a day, 
The expressions of both emperors turned serious as they beheld the scene in front of them. They saw a huge bird-like creature covered in a green glow charging forward. Its wingspan extended 200 feet. There was a large group of people sitting on its monumental body, and they gave off powerful auras. The Lightning Emperor muttered, The Peerless Sword Emperor, leader of the Peerless Sword Clan. The Peerless Sword Clan was one of the seven great five-star powers in the inner region. It was a sword clan, and most of its members used blades in their divine skills. The Transcendent Prince explained to Maximus, That's the Peerless Azure Wingbird a demon pet of the founder of the Peerless Sword sect. It's a contract that goes back generations. It's said this bird had a good relationship with the Peerless Sword Emperor's ancient ancestors. The creature's strength is equivalent to a peak supreme heavenly emperor. Maximus's eyes sparkled as he stared at the huge creature, which was getting closer and closer. There was no need for the Transcendent Prince to say anything. Maximus could already feel the terrifying power contained within the huge creature's body. The Transcendent Prince said again, Do you see the swordsman carrying the green sword? That's one of the seven great Imperial Princes, the Brilliant Prince. In terms of combat strength, he's roughly on par with me. After that, the Transcendent Prince looked at the team of martial artists beyond the Brilliant Prince. There were quite a number of formidable experts, and some of them were no weaker than the Cyan Demon Emperor. However, the Transcendent Prince, who knew about Maximus's abnormal combat strength, knew that these people were nothing to Maximus. They were all people who could be easily dealt with from his point of view. Therefore, there wasn't the slightest bit of nervousness or fear on the Transcendent Prince's face. Since these three great powers had bumped into each other, they naturally decided to journey to the Wild Forest together. On the third day, they encountered another two factions, both of them five-star powers. These were the Black Iron Demon Palace and the Dark Lightning Sect. Their leaders were both in the top 10 on the Heavenly Emperor ranking. On the fourth day, the five great powers finally arrived at the Wild Forest. The Lightning Emperor queried the Peerless Sword Emperor. Has the location of the Profound Phoenix Miniature World been determined? The Peerless Sword Emperor responded. There are still a few days left before the Miniature World's opening. We should wait till the other two sects arrive. At that point, with our combined knowledge and powers of perception, we should be able to find it within a day. At this point, the rulers of five of the top-ranked sects in the inner region, the Eight-Legged Lightning Emperor, the Iron-Willed Emperor, the Peerless Sword Emperor, the Black Iron Emperor, and the Dark Thunder Emperor were all waiting patiently for their peers. At the same time, they were mindful of the princes that belonged to their respective factions, the Transcendent Prince, the Iron-Willed Prince, the Brilliant Prince, the Demon Saint Prince, and the Lightning Warrior Prince. There wasn't much difference in strength between these young men and all of them emitted a deep commitment to battle and the quest for power. Soon, everyone raised their heads. They saw a dark blue flame coming from afar. Within the flame, human figures were arrayed like majestic columns. These were the emissaries of the Ghost Flame sect, led by the Ghost Flame Supreme Heavenly Emperor. To his left, was the strongest martial artist of the sect's younger generation, the Serenity Prince. The Ghost Flame possessed by members of this sect was considered the strongest divine flame in the continent, and the Ghost Flame Emperor had the most powerful version of this flame, 
one that had mutated at some point and become unimaginably destructive. Because of this, he had established himself as number three on the Heavenly Emperor ranking. This was a significant fact, for the top three on the list were considered in a different league from the rest. They were thought to have the ability to reach the 16th level of the Origin Tower. You finally arrived, the Lightning Emperor greeted his peer. Maximus could clearly sense that the other sect leaders treated the Ghost Flame Emperor with particular respect. One should know that these five Supreme Heavenly Emperor Warlords had made it a practice of mocking each other before this point. However, when faced with the Ghost Flame Emperor, not only were they earnest, they were also deeply reverential. Maximus narrowed his eyes. This is fascinating, he mused. So this is the strength of a martial artist in the top three on the Heavenly Emperor ranking. The conclusion he came to was that even if he used the Nine Flames Fire Tower and unleashed his strongest attack, he wouldn't be able to harm this eminent figure. After that, Maximus shifted his gaze to the Serenity Prince. His body was covered by a halo of deep blue fire. The ghost flame underneath his feet turned into a fire wheel and carried him forth. Further, there was a flame mark that looked like a lotus seed on his forehead. He emitted an energy so powerful that it set him apart. The Transcendent Prince, Brilliant Prince, Demon Saint Prince, and Lightning Warrior Prince all showed a look of fear, and their expressions were tense. Only the Iron-Willed Prince still had a look of fanaticism on his face. He was eager to fight the Serenity Prince. The Transcendent Prince curled his lips as he commented, The Iron-Willed Prince is so proud that he cannot see his own limits. He has taken on the Serenity Prince several times, and each time he has been injured. But he persists. Maximus looked at the Iron-Willed Prince, but didn't say anything. Right now, his combat strength was equal to that of the Transcendent Prince but with his determination to improve his combat skills through battle after battle, he could well surpass his peer in the future and become as strong as the Serenity Prince. Half a day later, the representatives of the Burning Sky sect arrived as well, led by the War Emperor and the Exterminating Prince. The ancestors of the War Emperor possessed the Heavenly Astral Divine Body and the Heavenly Astral Divine Flame. The combination of these two assets could unleash an incredible power, one close to a Chaos-level bloodline. These ancestors had relied on these tools to make a name for themselves in the continent, and one of them had nearly made it to the 19th level of the Origin Tower. At the same time, when these two assets were deployed, they caused great damage to the user's body, eventually leading to an untimely death. Thus. The descendants of the Great Ancestor had been careful to pass on only one of these elements to their offspring. The War Emperor had as his innate power the Heavenly Astral Divine Body. On the other hand, the Exterminating Prince had inherited the Heavenly Astral Divine Fire and combined this with a powerful Divine Body that came from his mother's side. The sect leaders gathered in a clearing of the wild forest, where they plotted how to lock onto the location of the profound Phoenix Miniature World's entrance. As they began their investigations, the representatives of the four star powerhouses arrived. Maximus noted that these were not ordinary four star powers. Indeed, they were the best of the best. They could certainly challenge some of the five star powers even if it was unlikely they could defeat them. A few days later, the Seven Warlords finally discovered the opening to the miniature world. They then led their respective groups and sprinted away. The four-star forces followed closely behind. With so many people, it was inevitable that they would attract the attention of elemental beasts. 
and these beasts were formidable. Many of them were at the supreme rank. But so what? These groups represented some of the most powerful human warriors in the forbidden ancient realm. Even the mightiest elemental beast was like an ant compared to them. They delighted in obtaining so many high-level essential crystals with such ease as they defeated one beast after another. A few hours later, they arrived at their destination. Before them was a break in the trees that seemed to be undulating and causing the space to ripple. The War Emperor stated, This feeling is indeed that of the profound Phoenix miniature world. The Lightning Emperor said in satisfaction, Very good. Then we'll just have to wait for the portal to open. A day quickly passed. The ground suddenly trembled and then seemed on the verge of collapse. Cracks appeared. Mighty trees fell. From out of nothing, a huge golden door materialized. It shook violently for a moment, then flung open as surging golden flames appeared before the shocked gazes of the martial artists. The Ghost Flame Emperor shouted, Ghost Flame Palm! He shot out a blue flaming orb that surged forward and sucked in the golden flames. The Transcendent Prince explained to Maximus in a low voice, Every time the profound Phoenix miniature world is opened, this strange golden flame appears. When it first appeared, no one was ready, and several supreme heavenly emperors were severely injured. Some perished on that day. Maximus nodded. This was indeed a little-known feature of the profound Phoenix miniature world. Luckily, though, over millions of years, the flame had weakened and was now nothing more than an obstacle before entering. Still, Maximus's heart skipped a beat as he thought to himself, That ghost flame palm! It is certainly a chaos-level divine skill! I must be careful of this man who possesses such power! Everyone, hurry up and go in! The ghost flame emperor shouted. This woke everyone up. The seven princes were the first to jump through the portal. Maximus and the others followed closely behind. After they had all passed through it, the giant golden door slowly closed. The Ghost Flame Emperor was indifferent. He commented in a light tone. Let's wait and see what happens over the coming days. We will meet back here when the portal reopens to let us out. He paused for effect, then continued. But why don't we establish some ground rules? If an imperial prince falls to another prince, no one is allowed to avenge the murder. If the murderer is not one of the princes, however, then any form of revenge is fair game. His comment was directed at the six other warlords. They nodded and said in unison, Of course. The leaders of the four star forces all had cold expressions on their faces as they processed this comment. They prayed in their hearts that their disciples wouldn't provoke one of the imperial princes. As the newcomers were making sense of their new environs, a white light suddenly shot out from the horizon. You're courting death, the War Emperor shouted. His pupils constricted as he punched out with a loud bang. The moment the Astral Vault Divine Fist was unleashed, an incomparably terrifying whirlwind swept out, consuming the heavens and earth. It carried an extremely potent cutting force, and the trees within a radius of 100 miles were instantly sliced into pieces. Apart from the other six five-star warlords, the leaders of the four-star powers were all horrified. They tried their best to resist the backlash with all their might. Just then, a miserable cry rang out, and the white light condensed into a figure of a white-haired old man. Space Splitter Emperor, the War Emperor blurted. 
The man before him was also a peak supreme emperor, ranked in the top 40. He had been hiding at the entrance to the profound Phoenix miniature world for days, waiting to enter and search for precious opportunities. Now that he had been found out by this intimidating cohort, however, he immediately had the instinct to flee. Where do you think you're going? The Black Iron Emperor shouted as he grinned mischievously. A huge shadow figure suddenly appeared behind him. Then, terrifying violent energy condensed into a giant axe that seemed to be able to cut the sky in half and ruthlessly slashed at the Space Splitter Emperor. The other warlords attacked simultaneously for good measure, and in no time, the Space Splitter Emperor had fallen. The four-star experts gulped. Sure enough, those who ruled the five-star sex were not to be underestimated. Once the fracas had resolved, Maximus took some time to scan his surroundings. The landscape was hostile. Volcanoes erupted as far as the eye could see, and the temperature was suffocating. The seven princes looked at each other, then ran in seven different directions, searching for their own opportunities. Maximus, the Cyan Demon Emperor, and the Divine Mirror Empress followed the Transcendent Prince as he flew to the southwest. They traveled in this way for 15 minutes, but didn't discover any variation to the landscape. The Transcendent Prince then advised, Everyone, spread out and look for your own opportunities. If anything happens to me, I will let you know through the communication jade. The Transcendent Prince was a good man. This domain was full of opportunities. And if they were traveling as a group and encountered some spectacular treasure, he didn't want there to be any ambiguity about whom it belonged to. He respected the members of this group as distinguished cultivators in their own right. It thus made more sense for them to all forge their own paths. He cleared his throat before continuing. That said, in three months, the Holy Heavenly Monument will descend. At that point, listen to my orders and promptly travel to our meeting place. We must act as a unified group to assure we reap the benefits. When the Holy Heavenly Monument descended, it would form a barrier in its surroundings. Only by remaining within this barrier could one comprehend the ultimate divine techniques inscribed in the monument. Furthermore, the closer one was to the monument, the more benefits one would obtain. Of course, during this period, competition for space was intense, and if one was alone, they would surely be pushed out by competing groups. Even the seven princes would not dare venture into this area on their own, once the monument had descended. Everyone naturally knew the importance of this matter. They nodded with solemn expressions. The Transcendent Prince handed pieces of communication jade to Maximus and the others before leaving. The Cyan Demon Emperor wanted to travel alongside Maximus, but Maximus rejected the idea. He wanted to explore the miniature world alone. If he encountered something magical, he wanted to make sense of it on his own. Maximus had been walking around in the profound Phoenix miniature world for three days, but he still hadn't had any luck. The profound Phoenix miniature world had been opened so many times that much of the best treasure was long gone. Along the way, Maximus had also encountered many heavenly emperors, all of whom had likewise come up empty-handed thus far. Two days later, Maximus's eyes focused. He saw a wide river flowing not far away. The source of the river was unknown, and he didn't know where it would flow to. The reason this river attracted his attention was it was completely formed by flames. The crimson flames surged continuously, and a shocking power was emitted from the surface. He didn't know the exact nature of this landscape feature, but he had a vague feeling it would be beneficial to him. Thinking of this, he increased his speed and quickly arrived at the Flame River. Waves of pure heat assaulted him. Maximus frowned and jumped into the River of Flames. 
the river, which was originally flowing quietly, suddenly surged. Traces of flame power flowed into Maximus's body. Maximus's meridians began to feel pain, then seemed to be morphing and expanding. This flame energy, not only can it forge my meridians, it can also forge my divine body, divine soul, and divine essence, making my foundation more stable, Maximus mused to himself. He immediately understood why he had been attracted to the river in the first place. Combining this flame energy with the power of time, he would be able to dramatically increase his control over this new internal strength realm within a month or two. Thinking of this, Maximus calmed his heart and decided to cultivate in the Crimson River of Flames. He was solely focused on this place now. Little did he know, however, that on the other side of the River of Flames, a figure was speeding over. His body was covered in deep blue flames, and he looked from afar like a streak of pure radiance. This was none other than the Serenity Prince. A few seconds later, the Serenity Prince saw the surging red river of flames in the distance, and his face lit up with joy. He knew that he had finally found his target, the Heavenly Fire River. He thought to himself, This place is the key to advancing the Ghost Fire. If it breaks through the limit, I will be able to defeat the Extermination Prince. The Serenity Prince's face was full of excitement. It was as if he could see a glorious future for himself. Thinking of this, he immediately jumped into the Heavenly Fire River. However, right at this moment, a huge monster suddenly emerged from the surface. It was entirely red, as if it were made of magma. There was no fixed shape, and it was constantly morphing. Heavenly Fire Beast, the Serenity Prince blurted as he attempted to escape in the opposite direction. From reading the history scrolls, he knew that this river had been developing for a long time, and in the process, had given birth to a unique monster formed by Heavenly Fire Energy. The beast could transform into any shape. The strength of these beasts would vary, but when they were defeated, they would leave behind a Heavenly Fire Pearl. This was an extremely valuable item and contained the purest Heavenly Fire energy. The Prince knew that if he obtained such a pearl, the process of improving his Ghost Flame would be dramatically sped up. The more pearls he obtained during this period of time, the better. Ha! <sighs> The Serenity Prince shouted in a low voice, and the ghost flame swept out, turning into a huge dark blue column in the sky. Die! he screamed. The column released endless auras and landed on the Heavenly Fire Beast. The Serenity Prince had already broken through to the upper grade Supreme Heavenly Emperor realm. The power of this move was not considered weak even by the standards of the great imperial princes. Within seconds, the beast had fallen. With a crimson pearl in his hand, the Serenity Prince sneaked into the Heavenly Fire River and began absorbing its power. The Heavenly Fire River started circulating in a whirlpool with the prince as its center. Traces of Heavenly Fire energy flowed into his body. Soon, the flames surrounding him were a stunning mix of red and blue. On the other side of the river, Maximus was also facing a heavenly fire beast. This one was fish-shaped, and its strength was equivalent to a low-level heavenly emperor. Maximus poured out his divine essence and killed the fish heavenly fire beast. Naturally, he thus also obtained a heavenly fire pearl. The energy contained in this pearl is roughly similar to the energy in this river. In other words, I can refine this pearl, and then… Maximus tried to think of the possibilities, but he would have time to hatch a plan later. For now, he flipped his palm and placed the pearl into his storage ring. 
he could not help but muse. Perhaps I can obtain several of these pearls. If the Nine Flames Fire formula wants to break through to a higher level, I can likely rely on these treasures to help the process along. Maximus continued to sink into the Heavenly Fire River and absorb its energy. In the blink of an eye, nearly two months had passed. Maximus had killed a total of 88 Heavenly Fire Beasts during this time and had thus obtained 88 pearls. He also now had tremendous control over his peak, medium-grade, supreme Heavenly Sovereign internal strength base. He could manipulate his aura so that it would not be detected. And with Lord Flame's help, he was confident even the Lightning Emperor and the other experts wouldn't be able to discover the details of his strength. Since I have more or less grasped my strength, it's time to upgrade the Nine Flames Fire formula, he thought to himself. Yet he had only modest expectations. In a month's time, the Holy Heavenly Monument would descend, and so he didn't have much time to cultivate. Maximus closed his eyes and circulated the Nine Flames Fire formula. The formula had already reached the late stage of the seventh level, but there was a long way to go before it reached the limit of this level. Maximus's goal was to break through to the peak. At that point, he would see whether there was in fact a level beyond the Supreme Heavenly Emperor realm. No one had ever accessed it, sure, but this didn't deter Maximus. Whenever he thought of this possibility, he would suck in a breath of cold air, his heart burning with passion. The Nine Flames fire formula began to circulate rapidly. A large amount of heavenly fire energy surged into Maximus's body, enhancing the formula. The Time Divine tool hovered above his head. Strands of the power of time poured down. A vortex was formed around Maximus. The heavenly fire energy was being slowly absorbed by him. Therefore, the vortex was modest in scale. However, the power of time was having its miraculous effects. The heavenly fire disappeared the moment it entered Maximus's body, feeding the Nine Flames fire formula. The whirlpool around Maximus was getting bigger and bigger, and the waves of fire around him were getting stronger and stronger. The momentum was monstrous. Soon, the Serenity Prince could not help but notice. What's going on? Why is the power of heavenly fire all being sucked in the other direction? The Serenity Prince, who was in the middle of cultivating, wondered to himself. The power of the heavenly fire around him had suddenly become quite thin. If it continued to dissipate, he knew it would be impossible for him to break through. His expression was full of uncertainty and anxiety. After a while, he rose into the air, then declared, This was my fine. I am entitled to it. With that, a killing intent flashed across his eyes. Following the direction where the heavenly fire had been sucked away, the Serenity Prince turned into a deep blue flame and shot out explosively. A few minutes later, he paused in the air. He was riveted by the sight of Maximus absorbing the heavenly fire at a crazy rate. With the power of time, Maximus's Nine Flames fire formula was getting closer to the limit of the late seventh level. The surging extreme violet sky fire burst out, becoming more and more vigorous. How can there be? such a terrifying suction force. The Serenity Prince declared in shock. Immediately, a greedy expression appeared on his face. If I had such an absorption method, I would be able to push the ghost flame past its limit. In a month's time, I might even surpass my father. And then, when I fully grasp a transcendent grade divine skill, I will no doubt find a place on the Heavenly Emperor ranking." He paused as a bright light flashed through his eyes. Then he concluded, I might even make it to number one. 
As he thought of this, the divine essence in the Serenity Prince's body suddenly surged out and merged with the ghost flame, transforming into a huge energy hand that grabbed toward Maximus. Who is it? Maximus shouted as his eyes suddenly opened, and two terrifying light beams shot out, piercing the energy field of the Serenity Prince. The prince was shocked. Sure, he hadn't used his full strength, but still, his attack shouldn't have been suppressed so easily. The Serenity Prince only vaguely remembered Maximus's background, but he was pretty sure this other man was only a medium-grade Supreme Heavenly Emperor. Then how could he deploy such a powerful counterattack with just a glance? Maximus also recognized the Serenity Prince at this point, but he was not afraid at all. I wonder why he attacked me, he mused casually. Yet a second later, he began to gather his divine origin in his right hand. It was clear the Serenity Prince had come with ill intentions. He just couldn't figure out what he had done to offend the Prince. Was this about a grudge with the Transcendent Prince? who had become Maximus's informal mentor and guide in the miniature world? Although the Serenity Prince was shocked, he didn't really take Maximus seriously. The Seven Princes were all geniuses who could fight above their level. How could they be afraid of a medium-grade Supreme Heavenly Emperor? The Prince declared with total confidence, Kid, you can absorb some of the Heavenly Fire but then you must leave this place. If you don't, I won't be able to cultivate." Only now did Maximus know why the Serenity Prince had come to cause trouble for him. It turned out that he wasn't the only one cultivating in this river of flames. But why should he leave with his tail between his legs? Maximus sneered in his heart. If the Ghost Flame Emperor himself had issued this edict, Perhaps he would have been moved to act, but the Serenity Prince was not his superior. He reasoned, This river is vast. If you feel I am disturbing your cultivation, perhaps you should move farther away. Then we can both cultivate in peace. You're courting death, the Serenity Prince shouted. The Ghost Flame again turned into a huge energy hand and slapped toward Maximus. This time, the prince had used a powerful divine skill. The dark blue palm was glowing with mysterious patterns, and terrifying auras were flowing out of it. It pressed down on Maximus, who threw out a punch. Divine Flame Battle Fist! He shouted. The move merged with the extreme violet sky fire, causing purple flames to billow into the sky. The flaming fist that was like a comet, instantly collided with the deep blue flaming palm. In an instant, a world-shaking roar resounded through the world. The power of the extreme violet sky fire increased once again, causing the attack to become even more terrifying. The power unleashed could not be considered weak even among transcendent grade divine skills. Wave after wave of magnificent flames rolled out. Purple flames and blue merged and clashed, causing the ground to shake and crack. Volcanoes shattered, and even the Heavenly Fire River began to violently churn, then overflowed, charring the landscape. Maximus remained motionless in the waves of flame. With the Divine Flame battle armor, these waves of energy couldn't affect him at all. This was the first time that Maximus's combat strength had reached the initial peak of the Supreme Heavenly Emperor realm without relying on his three divine bodies. On the other hand, the Serenity Prince was in a sorry state. He had underestimated Maximus, so naturally, his combat strength wasn't fully unleashed. Damn it! How can this kid be so strong? A mere medium-grade Supreme Heavenly Emperor, but he has the strength of the initial peak realm. Where did the Transcendent Prince find this guy? The Serenity Prince thought to himself in panic. Taking a deep breath, 
he immediately unleashed his bloodline. Waves of spectral energy rolled out from Serenity Prince's body. His black hair instantly turned blue, and he seemed to have become an emissary from the underworld. His body was covered in the ghost flame. Netherworld Light Column, he shouted as he raised his finger. A vast wave of energy swept across the earth and sky, causing the latent energy of the world within a thousand miles to erupt. Then, Maximus felt a majestic sense of pressure being exerted on his body. Maximus's pupils shrank when he felt the pressure from the heavens and the earth. He knew that this was a phenomenon that could only be achieved by a transcendent gray divine skill. Based on his own ability to fuse the extreme violet sky fire and the divine flame battle fist, he could gauge such things well. There were certainly a few issues the Serenity Prince had to address before his move was stable at the transcendent grade, but with the phantom fire, its power was unparalleled. Further, with his ninth underworld bloodline, the prince's combat strength was nearly on par with that of the blood god warlord. The phantom fire rolled in the void, forming a sea of flames that filled the sky. Suddenly, a huge column stretched out from the sea of fire. It looked slow to the naked eye, but in fact, it was falling at an extremely fast speed. As the column got closer to Maximus, he felt more and more pressure. Huh, I don't believe that you can resist this move. The Serenity Prince sneered amid the Ninth Underworld fire. Maximus's eyes lit up, and he instantly unleashed his three divine bodies. The Golden Immortal Physique, Sun Flame Body, and Divine Flame Battle Body were enhanced at the same time, causing Maximus's internal strength base to instantly rise to an incredible level. A dazzling white sun appeared behind him, and the flames it emitted were monstrous. Maximus turned into a flaming war god and threw out another punch. This time, the move was indisputably at the peak of the Supreme Heavenly Emperor realm. Before the Serenity Prince's Column of Fire could land on his opponent, it was blocked by a mysterious force in the air, then shot back at the Prince. It could only resist for a moment before it was crushed into pieces. The Ninth Underworld aura around the Prince was pierced through. Then, Maximus's energy attack rushed toward the prince's body. He was unable to resist, despite the pressure of his divine body. He was sent flying violently, wheezing as he flailed his arms. A cry of pain suddenly came from the sky. Then, a figure appeared. It was the Demon Saint Prince. Demon Saint? The Serenity Prince declared with a complicated expression. He was clearly irked by the appearance of one of his peers. The demon Saint Prince had an awkward expression. He had been sensing the battle from afar, but had only recognized the aura of the Serenity Prince. He had then approached cautiously and retracted his aura as he observed the bout. It was only at that point he had sensed that the aura on the other side was even more powerful. Ha <laughs> ha! Hello, Serenity Prince, the Demon Saint Prince greeted. What are you doing here? The Serenity Prince coldly said. Maximus silently looked at the two princes. Clearly, his true strength had been exposed to both of them now. He shot the Demon Saint Prince a glance that made a chill run down his spine. The prince thought to himself, this guy really is abnormal. Even the Serenity Prince was beaten decisively. I should avoid provoking him. Please, you two continue. I won't disturb you, the Demon Saint Prince stated casually, then turned around to leave. 
Wait, since you're here, can you help me? The Serenity Prince immediately transmitted his voice. Are you kidding me? Why would I risk my life? I've seen what this guy is capable of. The Demon Saint Prince reasoned. The seven princes were all competitive with each other. Indeed, their relationship wasn't harmonious at all. The idea of asking each other for help was unheard of. So, without saying anything, the Demon Saint Prince turned into a mass of devilish energy and disappeared. Coward! The Serenity Prince cursed in his heart. Since he wasn't going to get any aid, he had no choice but to retreat. However, his gloomy expression made Maximus understand that this matter was not over. He sighed. It would be easy to get rid of the Serenity Prince, but once he did, he would have to face the Ghost Flame Emperor. And at this point, he wasn't confident he could defeat such an opponent. I hope that this breakthrough of the Nine Flames Fire Formula will increase my overall strength by a large margin, Maximus mused to himself before going on. As long as my strength is great enough to fight the Ghost Flame Emperor, if the Serenity Prince dares to provoke me, I will kill him. He then put aside all these thoughts and once again sank into the Heavenly Fire River, circulating the Nine Flames Fire Formula. The power of time was unleashed, and soon the Nine Flames Fire Formula reached the limit of the late seventh level. It was only a step away from the peak. His divine origin had also reached the peak of the Sovereign Grade. The vortex in the Heavenly Fire River grew bigger and bigger, and the energy of the river became more and more formidable. It kept gathering and condensing, as if heading towards some crescendo. After what felt like hours, but must have in fact been a few minutes, Maximus's body suddenly shook, and the extreme violet sky fire expanded, soaring into the sky. It blotted out the sky and blocked the sun with purple flames. The divine essence in Maximus's body had undergone a tremendous change. Every trace of divine essence contained an extremely terrifying power. His overall aura was getting stronger, and he was taking on the dignity and majesty of an emperor. The Nine Flames Fire Formula had broken through to the peak seventh level. Even more astonishingly, his divine essence had surpassed the Sovereign Grade, reaching a realm that Maximus could not name. This was because no one had ever achieved it before. The Heavenly Emperors and Supreme Heavenly Emperors in the vicinity naturally sensed this unusual phenomenon, but its power made them not dare to approach. A strange expression suddenly flashed across Maximus's face as he gasped. Beyond this divine essence, his divine soul and divine body had also undergone a tremendous change. Both had broken through to the upper grade sovereign realm. Logically speaking, Maximus should not have been able to control his own strength once again after such an advancement. However, in reality, he was able to grasp his new level with ease. His foundation was incomparably stable after this breakthrough. This was unheard of. The Nine Flames Fire Formula has broken through to the peak of the seventh level, Maximus declared aloud as he took a deep breath. His face was filled with joy. Now he had the confidence to fight an expert like the Ghost Flame Emperor. If he used the Nine Flames Fire Tower, it would be difficult to predict the winner. Serenity Prince, I hope you don't provoke me further. Otherwise, Maximus mused. Then he smiled coldly. Yet all the while, Maximus was unaware that his breakthrough this time wasn't simple. It had stirred up a storm in all the divine realms. Indeed, the moment Maximus's divine essence surpassed the sovereign grade, a large number of phenomena appeared throughout the divine realm universe. A blurry figure appeared in the void in each and every one of the realms. 
the figure was emitting a multicolored light. These lights eventually formed a seven-colored lotus. The enormous figure sat upright within the flower. A solemn and vast power swept across the entire god realm. In front of this power, even god kings felt a little pressure. All the experts in these divine worlds were shocked. Who exactly was that person sitting on top of the rainbow treasure lotus? Why had the image appeared in front of all of them simultaneously? In the spirit realm, the spirit world emperor raised his head to look at this scene and gave out orders one after another, insisting that his subordinates discover the identity of this mysterious being. Amid the group of searchers, a willowy woman with a delicate face exclaimed, This person, why does he look so similar to Maximus? This woman was Isabella, who had been absorbed by the spiritual realm because she was a spiritual body when she ascended to the divine world. As expected, no matter where he is, he is the most outstanding, she went on. Isabella raised her head and looked at the blurry figure in the sky with pride. But immediately, she suppressed the longing in her heart and declared to herself, I must break through as soon as possible. Only by advancing to the ancient god realm will I have the qualifications to wander among the 3,000 god realms. Only then will I be able to find Maximus. She then sighed and concluded, Yet I am a rogue cultivator now. Where will I find the necessary chaos stones? A trace of worry flashed across her face. In the Flame God realm, the Flame God Lord had likewise issued urgent edicts to discover the identity of the figure in the Rainbow Lotus. His eyes flashed with greed as he mused to himself. Could it be that someone has condensed an unprecedented chaos lotus? Regardless, we must find him. He must have some unbelievable secret. At the same time, in a valley deep in the flame god realm, a figure with a cold temperament was sitting cross-legged and meditating. Her thick, crimson hair fell to her waist like a waterfall. She was otherworldly in appearance. The figure slowly exhaled deeply. Balls of flame suddenly rose around her body. Each ball of flame emitted auras of completely different attributes, but they were all incomparably terrifying. Although the woman had a cold temperament, her entire body was burning with terrifying flames. When she opened her eyes, the room around her turned icy cold. At that moment, a blurry shadow condensed in the air. Although it disappeared quickly, it caused the woman's delicate body to tremble. Her originally ice-cold eyes flashed with a trace of gentleness, and she could feel tears welling up. This was none other than Julie. She mused, That figure, even if it's blurry, I could recognize it anywhere. That is Maximus. Her face revealed a trace of gentleness, and she heaved a sigh of relief in her heart. After ascending to the god realm, Julie had learned that the competition on this higher realm was even crueler. How could she not have worried about her dear Maximus? But now, she knew that he had indeed continued to triumph. Fortunately, I am already a direct disciple of the flame god Valley and enjoy the guidance of many resources and experts. Now that I have reached the Supreme Heavenly Emperor level, when I break through to the Ancient God level, I'll leave the Flame God realm and look for Maximus, she thought to herself. She then closed her eyes once again. One Chaos Stone after another floated in midair, guiding the Chaos energy within the stones to condense within her body. She prepared to condense an energy lotus.